the summer of 84, I was an intern at the King Center in Atlanta. And a burly, middle-aged black man would visit the reflecting pool where King's crypt sat. Oblivious to anyone else, like Miles Davis performing with his back to his audience, he talked to Martin. He lamented the state of the world. Martin, everybody killing everybody. Everybody hating everybody. Why we be like that? We need you, Martin. Sometimes his psalms of anguish would be personal. Martin, they won't let me see my children. I got to see my babies. I need you, Martin. He was singing the blues, longing for peace the way a bluesman longs for the woman who left him. After pouring his troubles into the reflecting pool, seeking peace from a man dead for 16 years, he just shambled away down Auburn Avenue. And there came a point that summer when I never saw him again. Why would he be like that? It's a question echoed by many of us in the face of so much inhumanity and meanness. But we be like that because for all of our celebrations of King, we've yet to follow the good doctor's prescription and take his antidote for the blues of inhumanity and meanness, nonviolence. As an art form, the blues is as old as its creation within the African American experience. As a hurt, Blues is as old as the first heartache. Nonviolence is ancient, universal. Civil disobedience, a form of nonviolence, is in the play Antigone by the Greek dramatist Sophocles. It's in the message of the Nebulese prince who became Buddha and the Jewish rabbi who was Christ. The nonviolence of a white American named Thoreau and a Russian Christian named Tolstoy influenced an Indian Hindu named Gandhi who inspired an African-American Baptist named King, who for the past 50 years has been the North Star of every freedom movement around the world. The only problem with nonviolence is its name. It's defined by what it is not. What's nonviolence? It's, it's not violence. <laughs> you don't say to that special someone, Baby, I'm so deeply in none hate with you. <laughs> Let's make none hate. <laughs> if you do say that, keep that to yourselves. <laughs> John Lydon didn't sing, all we were asking is give none war a chance. It's defined by what it is not. King defined nonviolence as love in action. It's a love seeking to create community and goodwill. It doesn't oblige us, obligate us to, to like one another, but it does obligate us to respect the inherent dignity in each other and to not add to the world's violence and hatred. In fact, it commands us to stop suffering when we can. It's not weak, it's not passive, and it's realistic because it understands that just as the blues are a part of the human condition, evil is a part of this world and always will be. But like the blues, we're obligated to confront evil and to try to overcome it. The theme of the civil rights movement wasn't, we shall eliminate. It wasn't, we shall eradicate. It was, we shall overcome. I like King's definition of nonviolence. I think it's excellent, but I would add to it, which is fairly arrogant because I'm kind of saying I can improve upon the words of Martin Luther King Jr., <laughs> which I can't. I would have been the staffer 50 years ago who would have been stupid enough to try to edit him. Doctor, that, that, that speech you're going to give, it's not bad, but I'm just not feeling that word dream. <laughs> Why don't you change it 
to whimsical notion. <laughs> I have a whimsical notion. It's so much more poetic. <laughs> to me, the simplest definition of nonviolence is that we treat each other decently. It's not as much about a big idea as about the little graces of being kind and respectful to each other, honoring our common humanity, and not making anyone else's life heavier with pain and hardships. For instance, to not, and we've seen this, humiliate, dress down the hardworking waitress with three kids who made a mistake and got your order wrong. Now the way we treat service representatives. You see people bully other people like this and you ask, why we be like this? Why do you want to thicken somebody's blues? It's unrealistic to think that nonviolence will ever be clearly defined or fully embraced. But for more of us to live in its spirit and to think deeper about why we be like that and how not to be like that is more than a whimsical notion. And it may be too late for the man who sang his blues to Martin, but deep in my heart, I do believe love in action is a salvation for us all. Thank you.